What's up, no, Mr. There are B? Some people who believe that. Mr. Uh, Barry? Mr. Barry is actually an ex-Christian, so he wants to share something with us. Huh? So, I was raised and uh, brought to church like all others before me, and um, even when I didn't want to, um, I hid behind the sofa and my uh, grandma found, found me out and ratted me to go to church. So uh, that was sort of a picture of how I was, um, against my will, indoctrinated by the church. So, and um, this is the way uh, we need to be focusing on because um, having children to um, apply to to uh, to have them uh, believe in a God who says fear me um, I don't think is a nice cozy family God right I mean you know first John 4 18 says uh, there is no fear in love. If God is love, and he says there is no fear in love because fear involves torment, but whoever has been perfected in love uh, casts out fear. So if you throw out fear, if you throw out this idea of being, uh, you know, tortured in hellfire, then, uh, then God is not going to be mad at you because you question his existence, you know? Uh, so, you know, whenever you get rid of fear, then you will be truly free to ask questions and to do research. But as long as you think that God will not allow you to ask questions or uh, even doubt his existence, then you're just worshiping a demon who uh, has no goodness or love in him, and you're just worshiping out of fear. Indeed. So um, I left the church. Uh, when I was uh, presented uh, the history of philosophy in university and um, I had to propel myself with so much force against the doctrines and the dogmas and the belief system I was being told uh, the whole philosophy system the whole teleology teleology um, of uh, our, our belief system doesn't have any credibility anymore not with the things we know now and um, I think it's an asset to every uh, excuse me no, no, I was speaking to the host. I was telling him to put his camera a little bit up. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's, that's a good position. That's a good position. You're uh, well visible and um, in the middle of the screen. So what else do you want? Well... So, Mr. Barry, I appreciate you stopping by, and I, I, I'm glad that you... Uh, so you're free from religion, right? Um, I call myself spiritual now. Um, I do not believe in a single deity that... Um, that um, well, so do you, believe that, do you believe that any human being is going to suffer the wrath of any god after they die? That's up to them. Um, I mean, I've uh, I've heard uh, stories of a medium who I follow and whom I uh, whom stories I do believe in. Those are true. Yeah, um, I don't believe they're true. Okay, so there's. A so, so I would say anybody who is trying to tell other people that uh, they're going to suffer after they die then the person who is saying that is an evil liar. That people only right. trying to right. manipulate right. and control Point people taken. through fear. Point taken. And uh, she is not out to, uh, she's not out to. I bet you she charges money for, for her readings. 
and if she can scare you and say that she has a path to no, no, make no, sure no, that no. you're safe, then you'll keep paying her money to give readings and this is what she, you know, this is the t the same reason all religions are created. Let's scare people to death and then we will sell them the remedy so that they will come back. You're charging ahead on uh, a thing I said. Maybe, uh, maybe a thing or two I said was, um, was taken out of context because no, no, it's it's, I, it's okay. See, I Barry, we don't have a problem. Barry, Barry, that, hold on, hold on. Um, we have no problem with with people actually believing in any other thing as long as they don't go and you know threaten people that they have to believe in the same thing. So if you want to believe in those things, it's fine. But you know, Christians go around telling people that they'll go to hell to if they don't uh, believe in this religion. That this was not the um, the meaning of the meeting. She only wanted to point out that uh, people who have been uh, adhering to any religion sometimes get scared yeah. that much and uh, that they are scared to go to the other to the other side of where the light is. But but what I what I asked you is, do you believe that anybody will suffer the wrath of a god after they die? And then you said something to the effect of, you believe what this medium says, and and she said something like, yes, this happens. People are afraid to die because they're afraid of a, a god that's going to cause suffering after they die. But this is what I think needs to be eradicated. This is what I'm trying to free people from, the fear of some god who's going to torture them or hurt them somehow after they die. Nobody exactly. should live with this uh, exactly. evil lie over their heads. Yeah. Exactly. Mr. Barry, I'm, I'm going to have to drop you down. Um, we want to bring someone up, you know, we want to start cooking. So yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Stairway's back. He's in the comments, mm -hmm. at least. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, no, here he comes. Oh, he... Oh, yeah, can. here he comes. So why are you scared? Why are you scared of my dreams? Why am I saying something? Why you... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stay away, stay away, stay away. Stay away. Say yes, hi. Good. Your yeah, religion up? teaches you to say assalamu alaikum, but actually your religion tells you you're not allowed to say that to the to the disbelievers, only to the Muslims. No, 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 I agree. Assalamu alaikum. I agree. I agree. Hello. How are you guys? But, but, you? Yeah, we're, we're doing well, but isn't that true that your religion says you cannot say assalamu alaikum to the kuffar? No, because I me, I, we have to, but we don't need the response. We don't need the response. We don't need that. For, no, for no, example, you, no, 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 your religion so, says you cannot say peace be upon you to the disbelievers other than the Muslims. But do you know, do you know what is peace, of, peace upon you? That means you are, that, 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 you know, you are in peace with together. You know what I'm saying? That's what, so we actually call yeah, for but, peace. But that's why. That's not what I said though, but okay. Okay. So what is your claim? What's your yeah, claim? My, claim, my claim, actually, I was here before, I think ah. one hour before, and okay. the, uh, the host, he kicked me because I said, if you are an Amir, if you are from America, and you try to, to attack the religious book, no, I mean, the actually, actually book. he didn't kick you, I was the one who kicked you, so how do you know that he kicked you, why are you putting the blame on him? I, I, I kicked you, I did oh. it. Okay. okay. Okay, so okay, why if if you call if you call Christianity paganism, I agree. But what does this have to do with the Islam? Wait, hold on. Actually, do you see Islam anywhere on his uh, screen? Do you see Islam anywhere? I don't see, but he was attacking yeah. Islam. He was doing it. That's why I come up. Because you because you came up and you because islam is the same thing islam tells you the same lies islam but that's why i'm here to represent islam for him maybe he doesn't know last time i correct a mistake he, he was doing it he was saying that the uh, greek empires or roman empires have uh, have destroyed uh, have destroyed the, the the jew temple or something like that but it was not by by, by roman it was by nibushad nasser so sometimes the host is giving so wrong informations and try so, to so listen, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't alive in the first century CE when the temple was destroyed. I'm talking about in the year 70 CE, the Romans destroyed the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Not in 586 BC when Nebuchadnezzar did it. 
Yes, so, Nebuchadnezzar was way, way before. Did you even read the Bible? Even the Bible doesn't agree with you. Nebuchadnezzar was way before. We're talking about the first century, during the time of supposedly the Jesus that never existed. We're not talking about that. But why are you coming up here? I mean, do you want to convince okay. us to join Islam? Like, what's your... Uh, What's your position? Okay. What's your point? Okay, okay. Like, like I said, Islam come, and he was also saying that he said, how can Islam come after 700 years and prove uh, Messiah's existence? I yes, say... That's, that's actually true, so... Yeah, but listen, okay, can I talk? Can, can I say, can I, can I, can I give my uh, complete uh, uh, argument about this, or just you can keep quoting me? So, what yeah. arguments on, on okay what? so on listen what? okay okay so we know we know since the beginning since the beginning that is revelations coming from the sky to the earth like from the sky yeah yeah you know you know what i'm saying the, uh, nimrud nimrud your your uh, your no, uh, ignore uh, ignore that uh, listen, tell us tell listen. us why why is islam true and why is muhammad a prophet why is islam true exactly that's a good question okay is islam right. is true because we have the garden of eden and we have the holy land in our hand and he knows exactly what i'm talking about because what? mecca mecca is at the golden ration of the earth the golden ration of the earth is in mecca so the place that's holy land if you wait, don't realize uh, this actually wait 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 mecca has a holy site known as the kaaba right yes how did that come about I say that's because of the golden ration of the earth. That's the source no, no, no. of the earth. How, how did Kaaba come about? Who built it? How did it come about? Oh, oh, oh. You, you're asking me before the flood or after the flood? Go ahead. There was no flood, bro. There was yeah, no flood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. Flood, come on. No, 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 no. Can I talk with the host? Hey, I know host. No, no, you cannot talk. talk with the host. You have to talk to me, bro. You have to talk me, to me. me. Okay, first. Uh, <laughs> ladies first. <laughs> ladies first, then. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I forget. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I know it's haram. Me, I know my, my no, voice. No, no, no. Ladies first. No, I ladies know, I know. first. Uh, maybe maybe I'm actually half brained. I am not Gasat al Aqil, so you don't want to speak to me, you wanna to speak to the host. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Narration, according to an authentic narration from Muhammad, women are not Gasat al Aqil. Women are half brained. So I uh, uh, you disagree with that? <laughs> you, you wait, hold yeah. on. So you are agree you that women are half brained, huh? Yes. Wow. Ah, these are the teachings of your prophet. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. Okay, can can okay, can okay, women hold can on, women hold on. can yeah, women yeah, do can women realize what a man realize? Can women do what a man can do? Beautiful, beautiful religion. Yes, beautiful. We're That's all revelation. Listen, we gonna force. Listen, we gonna force this on you on this last minute. We're gonna he force this on you again. Are physically weaker. He said women have half of the brain of a man. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is exactly. It is. Uh, it you is you guys it can is. see. You guys can see. This is this is Islam. Yes, and yes. you, and do, you, do you know what we did? Do you know what we did? No, no, do you know no, what no, we did? You are trying we take, to attack me. Okay, can I talk? Let me, can I talk? Let me, can I talk? Let me, yeah, can I talk? For a second. Uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So he is coming and saying, why is Jeff attacking Islam? Okay, do you know because that Islam destroyed the, the whole Roman Empire? Do you know that Islam destroyed the whole Roman Empire? Islam destroyed the Roman empires and Tartarians, they, Islam are, they, they enjoy Islam. Islam, not Islam destroyed Islam not the Tartars, destroyed Islam the Tartars, the Tartars, they enjoy Islam. Bro, the Tartars, Habibi, they listen, enjoy hold up, Islam. Hold up, hold up. We are happy with that. Hold up, hold up. We are the last oh my generation. God, oh and listen, my God. We are Roman. Islam destroyed everyone, not only empires. Islam destroyed people's minds. We, uh, no, we destroyed the militaries. We destroyed, destroyed the... everything, bro. No, what are you talking about? No, we send about? you a message and we come to you. Why? Simple Why like that. You? If you don't Why accept, you we destroy all military? of you. No, Why we do the same thing as Alexander the Great bro. did. Oh, why you talk over me? So you're scared about my claims right now, yeah? Bro, we you are not even thing. answering my, my we questions, We did bro. the same thing what Alexander the Great did. When okay, he take a on, country, he Can I, can I ask you a question about, about Islam? Hold on, hold yeah, on, hold go on. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Aqiba. Yeah. What? Go ahead, Aqiba. You said, why did you call me, bro? Go ahead, sir. No, no, no you, said, you said Al-Qahba. Al yeah, Qahba means sir in English. Bro, but, 
No, you sir. Know, you know who I is said, Sir, go ahead, sir. You know, you know who is Pahba? Your mother, Aisha. So you know what happened? Jeff, I will tell you, Muhammad's wife, Aisha, so he just called me a whore. Muhammad's wife, Aisha, she used to have adult men coming to her house, sleeping and having wet dreams and suckling on her breasts. And this was with the permission of Muhammad. And these are authentic narrations in their books. And he's talking about me, by the way. He's calling me. Bro, Aisha was the biggest whore of the entire uh, Medina. What are you talking about? So he just called you a, uh, he just called you a bad name. But Yeah. He, but, he just came up and, and he said that he agrees with the narration of his prophets that women are half-brained. Yeah. And you heard that, right? He agrees. Yeah. So this yeah, is what course. Muslims think. And then now that I'm refuting him, now that I'm destroying him, he's calling me the W-H-O-R-E. He thinks that I'm not going to understand. So did he call you he's that? Like, he's it, it, did he call you that in Arab language? In, in Arabic, yes, yes, in, in Arabic, yes. In Arabic. So he just, me, he just blurted out narration. that he just insulted what? you with yeah, by yeah. calling you that. All right. Listen, one second, one second. So uh, we know that Christians are pagans. This is uh, no doubt. But Muslims claim to be monotheists. Muslims claim to be not pagans. Now, I have a narration here. It says, Omar, you, so basically the, the Kaaba has something known as the black stone where Muslims go and kiss the black stone. So Muslims think that by kissing the black stone, you can actually forgive your sins. So that black stone can actually forgive sins. And then they say their religion is not pagan. So you have Omar came near the black stone. This is an authentic narration. Omar came near the black stone and kissed it and said, no doubt, I know that you are a stone and can neither benefit anyone nor harm anyone. Had I not seen Allah's apostle, meaning Muhammad, kissing you, I would not have kissed you. So a companion of Muhammad knows that a stone cannot do anything. But his prophet, his pagan prophet, used to kiss the black stone because this was the ancient, uh, you know, the Meccans, they were supposedly, they, they used to worship the idols, right? I mean, these stories are not even true because Mecca is not even found in any map, you know, prior to the 800th century, uh, sorry, prior to the, to the 8th century. But the, listen, the, the entire history of Islam is a lie. Islam is just a Judeo-Christian plagiarism. But this guy came up here claiming that his religion is true, claiming that Islam will take over the world, and this is why we open these lives and talk against these evil religions like Islam and Christianity. Especially a filthy one like Islam. Islam developed from Christianity. Muslims learned everything from the Romans. The Roman Empire wanted to take over the world. By the way, Jeff, this is an opinion of mine. The Roman Empire did not only create Christianity just for the Jews. They created Christianity to take over the world. And this is why the Bible says, go and spread the gospel to every creation, every house. So they had an intention. It wasn't only the Jews. They began with the Jews. But they wanted to go over the world, spread the gospel to every house, to every door. That's why you see the J witnesses coming and knocking on your door on Sunday morning. Yep. Hey, let's talk about our Lord and Savior. Huh? The same thing is with Islam. The same thing is with Islam. Even worse. Ten times worse. This is why we talk about, uh, against these filthy religions, man. And these and, people and believe in these things. These people are actually a threat to society. They shouldn't even exist. They should be in jail. <laughs> so now, now you guys know why I like Precious in here. Because she can take care of the Muslims. I can take care of the Christians. She can take care of the Muslims. What I need is a, is a Jew, which <laughs> I, don't, I don't need a Jew. Uh, but... Uh, we need a Jew who actually knows the Talmud and all. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but what what you get here is people that can tell the difference between uh, the truth and the lies. That's all we're doing. 
We're saying when people create religions for the purpose of manipulation and control and threatening people and creating fear and anxiety in the lives of others, then this is a lie. You know, if God is not good and if God doesn't demonstrate uh, who he is through his uh, wonderful works instead of through his threats and his punishments, then it's a lie. You can know this uh, because whenever someone is trying to scare you, just like uh, the guy that came up talking about mediums, saying he believed in what the medium told him, that there, that there was some kind of bad stuff after you die, that's a lie. And, and even if it wasn't a, tr- a lie, you should... And I know it is, but even if it wasn't, you still shouldn't live your life under the fear of any threats by anybody else. If it's a God or if it's a man, you should not live your life in fear. You should live your life in love. And that's what I'm uh, contending for uh, all people. And, and you cannot live your life in love if you're bowing down to some God that demands it or else he will threaten you with some sort of punishment. If God cannot love us, because this is how, this is one of the things that led me out of Christianity, is I have children, and I love my children unconditionally, and if anybody ever tried to harm my children, I would do everything in my power to protect them. But yet, God doesn't love us that way. God, in fact, I had one guy in here earlier that said that the reason God, the Creator, created us is because He wants us to endure great suffering and hardship and punishment because this is what really molds you and creates you. You're like, well, I have no respect for a God who creates us for the sole purpose of causing us to suffer and thinking that there's some kind of good behind that. I, don't, I didn't create my children so that I could cause them to suffer. I created them so that I could show them love. And if God is not going to show us love, then I have no Love for Him. Oh. And we can see all the lies and the contradictions in the holy books, in the Bible and in the Quran, and every, everywhere you look. You can look in the world and see the conflict. You can see the evil all throughout the world. Uh, you, you do not you have to live in bigger? fear. No, no. Can you make my screen bigger? Because yeah. he's calling me a W-H-O-R-E. Let me show something about the wife of, of his prophet. So it says, this is Sahih, al- no, this is Sahih Muslim, right? 290 take take screenshot guys guys take screenshot why is it not showing clearly sahih muslim 290 sahih muslim 290 it says it's an authentic narration okay so sahih muslim is basically a collection of sahih or authentic narrations about muhammad and his life it says what why is it not clear uh, it says Abdullah bin Shihab al Khawlani reported, I stayed in the house of Aisha and had a wet dream. I stayed in the house of Aisha. So adult grown men are sitting and, and staying and sleeping in the house of the wife of the prophets. And having what? Oh my God, it's not clear. Can you open it from your end, Jeff? Uh, I stayed in the house of Aisha and had a wet dream and perceived its effect on my garments. (laughs) So uh, he had a wet dream, so his his liquid came out. So imagine, Jeff, imagine this. You have a wife, right? In your house, a strange man comes and sleeps in your house and then has a wet dream, right? And then perceived its effects on my garment. So in the morning, I dipped bath the clothes in water. This act of mine was watched by a maid servant of Aisha, and she informed her. She, Aisha, sent me a message. What prompts you to act like this with your clothes? He, the narrator, said, I told that I saw in a dream what a sleeper sees. So they are openly speaking to Aisha about the experience of the wet dream that they're having. They're openly speaking with the wife of the prophets about a wet dream that they have seen. It's like, Jeff, someone comes to your wife, a man who slept in your own house, 
and then comes to your wife and tells your wife, oh, you know Jeff's wife? I actually had a wet dream and this and this happened and then uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it says, yeah. So he, the narrator said, I told that I saw in a dream what a sleeper sees. She said, did you find any mark of the fluid on your clothes? I said, no. She said, had you found anything, you should have washed it. In case I found that semen on the garment of the messenger of Allah dried up, I scraped it off with my nails. So she used to scrape off. She used to, so when, uh, when her beloved husband used to have a wet dream or, or, or supposedly uh, semen dripping out of his uh, private parts, she used to, she did not even bother washing it. She used to scrape it with her fingernails. She did not even bother washing it. She used to scrape it with her fingernails. So this is the beautiful story of Aisha and Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. She did not even bother wash. So when Muhammad used to have, uh, you know, an ejaculation, and he used to have his liquid, um, you know, on his clothes, she did not go and wash his clothes. She scraped it with her fingernails. Huh? Uh, she uh, scraped uh, it with her fingernails. All right, let me, let me answer a question. Joseph says in the comments, uh, he meant to ask if I think the Bible is a conspiracy. So it depends on how you want to uh, define conspiracy. I would say that the, the New Testament Christianity story was, I say, propaganda. Uh, and it was originally intended to be uh, directed only at the Jews. The, so when it w originally was created, it was just a way to tell the Jews that if they wanted to participate in the Roman Empire, they needed to quit rebelling, quit expecting God to send them a Messiah to liberate them. They had to believe that Jesus was their Messiah or else they would not be allowed to live in the Roman Empire. So it was a, it was a demand by the Roman Empire that the Jews either conform or die. Now, over the years, uh, people perceived it different ways. Maybe, maybe it was. Uh, I don't really see the evidence that it was organized through uh, other emperors. Uh, you know, like Trajan and Hadrian and these guys. Yeah, I believe that it started during the Flavian dynasty, which was in the latter half of the first century, and maybe the subsequent emperors of the Roman Empire they didn't really see the point of it or whatever they didn't they're not the ones that created it so they didn't understand what it was intended for but by the time of Constantine they said you know what we, we see great value in this let's let's just incorporate all of our pagan religions into Christianity and we'll force this on the world under threat of violence because it served their purpose it's not because Constantine believed that Jesus died for his sins uh, it was because Constantine saw that he could use it as a way to rule the world, and that's what he did. He ruled the world through uh, through force and through violence and through religion. So that's that's why Christianity started. It was related to the war. It was created most likely in response to, well, during the Flavian dynasty. And it developed over hundreds of years. So they probably created a, a certain sect of people that were working on this, but uh, it was not uh, uniform. It was not pushed out. So it wasn't the Roman state religion in the first and second and third century. It only became the Roman state religion in the fourth century. What's up, Nitro? Hello. Uh, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, so... I'm not here to ca cause any trouble. I'm just here to ask you questions. Uh-huh. So, I didn't really understand from your story what you just um, told us. Uh, so, can you, like, explain to me more of why you don't believe in Jesus or why do you think God has to give you love or anything at all? Well, so the Bible says God is love. And the Bible defines love in 1 Corinthians 13 and says, you know, love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. It, it thinks, thinks no evil. It rejoices in the truth. And it keeps no record of wrongs. So 
uh, this demonstrates a contradiction. If God is love, then he believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. But this is not what the God of the Bible has ever done in the Old Testament or the New Testament. He, he demands obedience or he threatens punishment. This is not what love does. And so from a personal uh, life experience perspective, I know the difference in love and hate. You do too. Uh, and if you, if your daddy told you that if you don't, uh, if you don't pick up your room, if you don't clean up your room, I'm going to throw you in a fire. Then you would know that your daddy didn't love you. It doesn't take a genius to know this. Any logical, sane person would know that if a father said, I'm going to throw you in a fire and you're going to be weeping and gnashing your teeth and you're going to, and the fire is never going to be quenched, then you would know that your father did not love you. So this is one element out of a thousand that told me that when God threatened people to obey or die or be punished severely for all eternity, then I was like, well, this, this is not something that a loving God would do. This is something that an evil tyrant would do, a king maybe, who was afraid of losing his power. So you can, you can know that through life experience, and you can also know it from the Bible. The Bible tells what love is, but yet God is not does not meet the definition of love. Why it doesn't meet it? Because we are at fault of it. Because our sins, how we have ruined the world. It's our fault. I've, I've never done anything to ruin the world. What have you done to ruin the world, Nitro? I'm, I'm not saying I have done, but we are all okay so no no all. so nitro this, this is the, another problem with christianity is it trains you to think that you are wicked and vile and that you are disgusting and that god can't even stand you you're so wicked and ridiculous so this is not love this when you're destroying uh you know everybody's self-confidence and thinking that they're a good person just trying to ruin their their self-confidence you want people to think that they're wicked evil and vile and disgusting so bad that, that you deserve to be thrown in a fire this is wicked evil it's abusive to tell people that they are worthy of being tortured in fire you're not worthy of fire you're not worthy of hell no matter who you are or what you've done not even Ted Bundy is worthy of being tortured for all eternity in a fire Nobody, no matter what they have done, is worthy of eternal suffering. Yes, I know that. But if you commit blasphemy or murder someone, that's just unforgivable. God can't forgive you that. That's why he threatens you. So, so how many people did God unalive in the Bible? Let's see. I don't have my Bible here. Wait. Well, two was it more than one? Billion. Was no, it more than billion. one? Two billion. Yes. 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 Jesus, okay, billion. So, so why could God not forgive murder if he himself murders? Because a God word, puts us to test. He's, he wants to see. So he's a hypocrite. Have patience. So, so he, can, he can be evil, but we can't? God is not evil. He tests people to see how they act against mm -mm, his No, Nacho, Nacho, please. You need to start using your brain. Uh, I, I, I think you're young. I don't even want to ask how old you are. But please, before you grow old, start thinking. If God unalives people, then he has no right to judge us for doing it. it it's, it's just the only way that God would have a right to judge us is if he was perfect and good and when people train you to think that God is perfect and good but yet he unalives millions of people then you've got to be smart enough to realize that somebody's lying to you nobody's lying to me God gives everyone a lifetime like someone dies no he doesn't God takes life from little yeah. children some people he only gives them six months. Some people he gives 80 years. So yes, why does God take life from it. innocent children? There's a point to it. 
So God has a reason to to take life from innocent children. Yes. I really hope that you'll start thinking before you that, that's, uh, grow that's old. It's called a light plant. It's called a lie is what it's called. It's not a lie. You need to repent. <laughs> All right, Nitro. I hope that you, I, you need to repent. You need to start using your brain. So right now you're not using your brain. You need to change and start using your brain. <laughs>